to do so quietly, please. And the final item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 10290 in the name of Neil Finlay on St John's Children's Ward still closed to out-of-hours inpatients. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. I call on Neil Finlay to open the debate for around seven minutes, please, Mr Finlay. Thanks, President Officer, and can I say a big thanks to members who have signed my motion and have allowed uh, this de debate to go, uh, go forward. There is a, a, actual, an error, there is an additional word in the uh, uh, motion which says out, uh, out of hours uh, inpatients. It's actually all inpatients, so I apologise to the Chamber for that. Um, I wish there was no need for this uh, debate. I wish that uh, parents with desperately sick children from communities in the west of West Lothian, like Blackridge and Whitburn and Armadale and Falthouse, Stonyburn, Breach and Adewell and beyond, didn't have to endure long and sometimes life-threatening journeys to Edinburgh for treatment. I wish that parents from Bathgate and the Calders and Livingston weren't forced to drive past their local hospital just a few minutes away to travel in a chaotic Edinburgh bypass to get treatment for their little ones, but they have no choice. I wish that a decade-long promise by the SNP government to keep healthcare local were more than slogans on the long-discarded election leaflets of the two cabinet secretaries who represent West Lothian, but were real promises delivered for the residents of their West Lothian constituencies. President officer, six years ago, the West Lothian Courier reported on a staffing crisis at St John's Children's Ward. Six years ago. Then it was about the withdrawal of paediatric trainees from the ward. And despite me making representations to NHS Lothian and the Dean responsible for the trainees, We've seen no, response, no, no progress in that regard. The reality is that in the six years since these problems were first highlighted, things have gotten a whole lot worse instead of better. Three times we've seen the ward closed and reduced from a 24-7 inpatient service to an assessment centre. One of these times, it was due to a married couple of doctors taking their holidays together. Why is it considered acceptable? that a vital service is allowed to buckle because two members of staff, quite naturally, and I don't condemn them at all for that, choose to take leave at the same time. On each occasion that there's been a closure, NHS Lothian have told me they were doing all they could to sort this out. They were scowling the globe for staff and it just wasn't possible to find any. The First Minister told me this was just a temporary situation. They also advised that despite consultants being employed by NHS Lothian as a whole, they were unable to make them travel to Livingston or work flexibly over different sites to provide a 24-7 service, but instead expected families and children to travel up to 33 miles when in need of emergency treatment. However, this latest closure is the longest and most worrying. Almost 230 days ago, 230 days ago, the ward was closed to inpatients. And from then until uh, January, almost 500 children had been sent to other hospitals with 414 admitted to a ward. Over 3,000 children were sent home from the emergency department after midnight. And on 47 occasions, taxis costing almost 2,000 pounds were paid to take them home. The children sent to Edinburgh from St. John's didn't have a grazed knee or a sprained ankle. These were children with very serious conditions. Children like Matthew, who suffers from serious, a serious respiratory problem, or Frankie, who has a rare condition that causes him serious seizures requiring very regular and urgent hospitalisation, or Caden, who, who uh, suffers from severe breathing difficulties and only last week had to be hospitalised at Wisher General. These are children for whom every minute in an ambulance, every second stuck in traffic or in the bypass puts their lives at risk. President officer, over the last two years, NHS Lothian have twice brought in the Royal College of Paediatrics to independently examine the need for the ward. On both occasions, they have confirmed that St John's needs a 24-7 children's service. Hardly a revelation given it sits in one of the youngest and fastest growing communities in Scotland. And yet, despite this, we find the situation getting worse instead, instead of better. Cabinet Secretary, I say to the public, have had enough. A few weeks ago, on a bitterly cold day, I was joined by families and children outside St John's. Uh, those parents contacted me as they wanted to demonstrate and vent their frustration at this situation. And I want to thank 
the mums and dads, grandparents, carers and children who came that day, and the thousands who signed petitions, postcards and surveys calling for an end to this ridiculous situation. I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, tell you of three quotes from randomly selected, uh, and I assure you of that, uh, from some of the latest correspondence I have had. The Scottish Government are fully accountable for this. They should be recruiting the necessary personnel to fill these posts. There is no excuse for a hospital on your doorstep uh, and not being able to use it for my three-year-old child. I think this is an outrage. The children's ward should be open at all times. And there are hundreds more. President Officer of Senior Officers at NHS Lothian and Ministers and Civil Servants in the Scottish Government haven't got the ability or the initiative to resolve these problems after six years, then maybe, just maybe, they should make way for people who can. Parents don't want to be fobbed off any longer. We need action to make this vital service sustainable. No more shrugs of the shoulders, no more platitudes, no more absence of any sense of urgency because children's lives are at stake. President officer, it's not a weakness to admit your failings. We should all show more humility and honesty at times. So I genuinely appeal to the Cabinet Secretary to seek help to resolve this from wherever it can be found, whether that's from other nations of the UK or from some of our international uh, neighbours. Admit your failings, apologise for this mess and seek help to resolve this unacceptable situation now. We now move to the open debate. For speeches of four minutes, please. And I call Gordon MacDonald to be followed by Miles Briggs. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for the opportunity to add my voice to those calling for the return of a 24-7 service at the paediatric inpatient ward at St John's Hospital as soon as possible. I have to declare an interest as my daughter-in-law recently gave birth to my first grandchild at St John's and I'm thankful to the staff and the paediatricians for the care my daughter-in-law and grandson received. The Royal College review report into the situation at St John's concluded not once but twice that West Lothian, with the same population as Dundee and with a growing young population, merited and needed its own children's ward. A recommendation accepted by the Scottish Government and NHS Lothian. The Royal College updated report of September 2017 highlights that the Health Board has tried extremely hard to make this arrangement succeed with four rounds of active consultant recruitment. However, there are two issues impacting on the success of the recruitment drive. The first, the lack of paediatric consultants across the UK. The Royal College highlighted in 2017 that nearly a third of the UK's 195 NHS trusts and health boards have temporarily closed paediatric wards due to shortages in child health professionals, the vast majority of vacancies being consultants. In relation to St John's Hospital, the Royal College, no thank you, the Royal College updated review report states it has a long-standing reputation as a unit that is under threat of closure and highlights that this is a significant blight on recruitment. This is despite the Scottish Government and NHS Lothian accepting the option that a 24-7 service should be delivered. It would be helpful if the Cabinet Secretary could highlight what steps the Government is taking to ensure the NHS Lothian follow through their commitment to respond to and implement the Royal College recommendations in our closing remarks. Presiding Officer, West Lothian children have always had to travel into Edinburgh for particular types of care and treatment. This is a well understood and accepted by the wider West Lothian community. But having the children's ward at St John's prevents some children from being admitted to hospital miles away from home. It also enables children who have had to receive serious and intensive treatment at the sick kids or York Hill to return to their local hospital for rehabilitation. Lengthy hospital admissions miles away from home have a well-documented impact on the well-being of children and a heavy financial and emotional cost to families. Therefore, treating children closer to home 
whenever possible is not just the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do and in everyone's interests. This is an important point made by the constituency MSP, Angela Constance and others in the evidence submitted to the Royal College when it was deliberating on paediatric services across the Lothians. I want to end by highlighting remarks that have been made by the West Lothian constituency MSPs, Angela Constance and Fiona Hislop. St John's Hospital is a first-class hospital with a children's ward that is held in high esteem by the local community. It is imperative that politicians do everything to support the recruitment of paediatricians and advanced nurse practitioners by being positive about the future and what the hospital offers. We must not, in our endeavours to protect and enhance local services, create a negative message or what the Royal College refers to as blight. This would be counterproductive and a disservice to the children and people of West Lothian. Finally, I want to put on record my thanks and that of my colleagues to the doctors, nurses and the wider support staff at the Children's Ward at St John's who do a tremendous job day in, day out in difficult circumstances and that we stand by them in their quest to continue to deliver for the children of West Lothian. Could I ask members to desist from shouting from a sedentary position at the back of the chamber, please? And I call Miles Briggs to be followed by Anna Sarwa. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd like to start by congratulating my Lothian colleague, Neil Finlay, on securing today's debate. And I'm pleased that Parliament is debating an issue of such importance to so many families across West Lothian. It's difficult to overstate the level of concern, frustration and indeed anger felt by West Lothian residents at the continuing closure of the kids' ward at St John's. When this latest closure was announced last June, the third in as many years, NHS Lothian and the Scottish Government indicated that a full service would be reinstated as soon as possible after the summer. The impression was clearly given that we would see a 24-7 service resumed last autumn, but many months later we appear to be nowhere near a reopening, and local people are understandably disappointed and annoyed. Neil Finlay set out in a very effective way uh, the impact this closure has had on hundreds of families across West Lothian who've had to see their children admitted to Edinburgh Sick Kids Hospital instead of St John's with all the extra travelling times, expenses and stresses that that brings to parents who are already worried and anxious about the health of their child. The closure has piled also extra pressure on the sick kids and on overstretched ambulance services. Indeed, on this latter point, a recent Freedom of Information request has indicated that the number of patient journeys by ambulance from St John's to the sick kids increased fourfold when the ward was closed to inpatients compared to when it's fully open. It's not, and it's not only parents and families who are angry, but also the hard-working ambulance staff, as well as the brilliant paediatric nurses, doctors and consultants at both the Sick Kids and St John's, some of whom, whom I met on a recent visit, who've been let down by an abject failure over many years now, both by NHS Lothian and by this Scottish Government, to put in place the robust, credible, long-term workforce plans that we must see at St John's to allow the kids' ward to operate sustainably on a full-time basis despite warning after warning. And the inability to recruit sufficient consultants and tier twos to cover the ward on a 24 seven basis is the fundamental short term crisis we need to resolve. And I look forward to the minister updating parliament on what any progress has been made on that and, and what innovative approaches can be taken to actually develop and recruit the staff which we need to see at St John's. Because it's quite clear from this debate and over the last six years that the current approaches are clearly not working and are not good enough. But we also need to see a longer term approach that raises the profile and more importantly the prestige of the paediatric services at St John's. That's why I've called on the Scottish Deanery to launch a review, a review of where paediatric tra training takes place in the South East Scotland region with a view to ensuring that trainee medics can actually choose to undertake to do part of their training at St John's. And this is what the specialists there were telling me when I visited them, could help actually make it a 24 seven unit once again. And I hope the deanery can show flexibility and look at all possible options and systems to allow this to take place with St John's Children's Unit possibly being deemed a satellite to the sick kids for training purposes. This would I believe raise the status of children's services in St John's, provide more medics to assist the consultants team there and mean medical students have that experience of a hospital's kids, 
kids' ward and the fantastic opportunities, above all, that St John's and therefore, uh, can present for an early career, and not just larger and more specialist hospitals like the sick kids when they're actually looking to full-time positions. So I'll be writing to the Deanery on this and I'd welcome the Cabinet Secretary and other members' support for this initiative. To conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, I welcome today's debate. I think it's incredibly important that we do air these views and have these issues raised in our Parliament. I'm happy to give my full support to the motion and to my constituents across West Lothian who, above all, want to see the Sick Kids Ward restored to 24-7-1. It should be an area with, as we've heard in this debate, it, this area has a growing population and clearly requires the level of paediatric service as other parts of Scotland enjoy. Above all, I hope ministers will take decisive actions now required to ensure the ward is reopened again and on a sustainable long-term basis. That means local families can have confidence that we will not experience any further closures and we'll be able to see that West Lothian's children are treated in West Lothian. Thank you. Call Anna Sarwar to be followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start, like others, in congratulating Neil Findlay on bringing forward uh, this important debate. Can I say right at the outset to uh, Gordon MacDonald that what lets down service users is the continued closure of the ward and the continued inaction of the Scottish Government and the Health Board, not the individuals campaigning to keep the ward open. And I think it's actually an insult to suggest that those campaigners who in their own voluntary time, many of them parents of children who need the use of that ward, uh, are somehow scaremongering or letting down the local community. I pay tribute to all the campaigners uh, who are out there on the streets campaigning uh, on this issue. But the reality is they shouldn't be campaigning because they have been promised year after year that their ward was safe and that their ward would be open, it would be fully resourced, fully staffed and give the care that their children deserve. And it's a shame now that we're now 230 days to that continued closure. I'd like to say this was an isolated case, but sadly, it's not. We only need to look at the decision of the paediatric ward at the Royal Alexandra Hospital, where they were promised that that ward would remain open, but is now closed. When you look at campaigning, not in paediatrics, but in other parts of our NHS, whether it be the maternity services at the Vale of Leven or at the Inverclyde Royal Hospital, where again, local campaigners who were promised that their service would remain open are having to take to the streets and sign petitions to protect a service that they were promised during the election would remain open. Because fundamentally this debate and other debates that we've had about NHS services come down to the integrity of this government, public trust, transparency of our health boards, an ongoing workforce crisis, continued cuts the health boards are having to make and the vital services that people need and that they need locally. The reality is this is not happening in isolation. In freedom of information requests to health boards across Scotland, they have said that over the next four years, they expect to make £1.5 billion of cuts. That will impact on services. We have a workforce crisis where we have consultant vacancies across the country and 2,500 nursing vacancies too are already overstretched, undervalued and under-resourced NHS staff having even more pressure piled on top of them. And what do the experts say? Because often we hear the government hide behind what they claim as expert opinion. But what do the experts say on this? The Royal College of Paediatricians and Child Health making it very clear that St John's requires a 24-7 inpatient service. And again, I want to put on record my thanks to those at the RCPCH as well as all staff at the St John's who continue to go above and beyond. And one of the excuses we've repeatedly heard is Due to safety issues, wards can't remain open. I would ask directly to the Cabinet Secretary, why have these wards been allowed to become unsafe in the first place under this government's watch? It's simply not uh, acceptable. And this on the same day that a survey was published showing that two thirds of NHS board members don't believe that the NHS board is transparent with the public. A complete shame and sham, quite frankly, for the people that they are supposed to serve, and I think it's incumbent on the Cabinet Secretary to address those issues head on. I want to just say in closing that we've heard platitudes before, we've heard warm words before, we've heard promises before, but what people will judge the Cabinet Secretary on and the Government on is action. And what I hope to hear from the Cabinet Secretary today is her to set out a clear, realistic 
an honest timetable of when we will see this ward reopen and how they will address not just the workforce issues at St John's, but workforce issues across Scotland that are letting down too many of our patients. Call Alison Johnson to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm sure that everyone in this chamber believes that the ongoing closure of St John's inpatient services for paediatrics is unacceptable. And we all accept it's hugely distressing to staff, to patients and their families. And, and I too would like to thank Neil Finlay for bringing this opportunity to the chamber this evening. In June last year, I attended a meeting um, with other concerned local politicians and NHS Lothian in the Civic Centre in Livingston, where we sought assurances that this closure would be a short-term one. Um, it's fair to say that NHS Lothian couldn't provide an exact date when the ward would reopen, but I think we're all dismayed to find ourselves debating this issue in this chamber nine months later. No resolution in sight. Now, we know that NHS Lothian have recruited one paediatrician, and confirm that an offer has been made to another candidate, but these won't immediately solve the staffing situation, the staffing shortages at St John's. Um, I too would like to reiterate that I fully support the recommendations from the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health on the future of St John's. And, um, Gordon MacDonald made the point that the review team reported that the population activity and demand for a full obstetric service in West Lothian merits the retention of inpatient paediatrics at St John's. With regard to uncertainty about the unit's future, putting off um, you know, prospective consultants, I would say to them that the campaigning on this issue simply demonstrates the need for this hospital, for this service in this hospital, um, and that West Lothian, people in West Lothian and this parliament would warmly welcome them. West Lothian is one of the fastest growing parts in Scotland. It's a popular place to bring up a family and families can't afford to lose this vital service. And its closure, as we've heard, puts pressure on the sick kids, on our ambulance staff and on other services too. It is the year of young people in Scotland and it reflects badly on us that in 2018, young patients in West Lothian don't have access to a local inpatient service. And telling families that they're not unique, that this is a problem that's affecting the whole of the UK, that is little comfort. And I would ask the government to really focus on this issue. Um, we need to get this right. I don't see any specific proposals in the government's health and social care workforce plans to address the serious shortage of paediatricians in Scotland. Um, there are calls for changes to the paediatrics training status of St John's. I'll support changes that would help us to resolve this closure in a safe and effective manner. But equally, I understand that bringing more postgraduate trainees into the hospital wouldn't necessarily allow the hospital's hours to be, the services hours to be extended. So I believe new proposals to improve working across sites in NHS Lothian must be brought forward. It's unacceptable for such a needed facility to be closed for inpatients for this length of time. While recruitment is ongoing, NHS Lothian and potentially other health boards should be working to provide cover from other facilities. If we think it's unacceptable, if we think it's acceptable for unwell children to be taxied over to Edinburgh, then we have to consider arrangements put in place to support staff who could work on a temporary basis in St John's. And we've also got to make sure that families are getting appropriate help with travel expenses and other immediate costs. Um, I visited the Family Support and Inclusion, Financial Inclusion Service at the Royal Hospital for Children in, in Glasgow and learned about the financial support they give to families who arrive often in real distress at any time of the day or night with a sick child worried about what's going to happen next. And I'd like to see this approach embedded in every major children's hospital in Scotland with reliable funding. So I'd like assurances that families with, chil with sick children in West Lothian have got the support they need with regards to those expenses and that they know where to get that support. But again, I must stress that fundamentally these recruitment issues come down to a shortage of qualified doctors. We've got to bring more, uh, we've got to bring adequate numbers of students through our medical schools. Um, we need to improve access, widen access to medical degrees. I know that universities in Scotland are leading some great work, you know, the REACH programme, for example, um, targets secondary schools with low rates of progression into higher education, but we need to do more. And I'd like the Cabinet Secretary to, uh, to, to inform us as to what action is going to be taken that hasn't been taken to date um, because this action is long overdue and it is needed now. Thank you. 
Alex Cole Hamilton, followed by Gordon Lindhurst. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by adding my voice and congratulations to Neil Finlay for bringing this important debate to Parliament and to the campaigners who are fighting tirelessly to keep this in the fore of our mindsets in this chamber, not least for those of uh, my constituency who have regular mm -hmm. cause to use the children's ward at St John's. Now, this government, it's fair to say, enjoys the support of every party and every individual in this chamber in its laudable aim to make Scotland the best place in the world to grow up. But we will forever be adrift of that ambition when one of the principal children's wards to serve not just West Lothian, but communities within the confines of our nation's capital can experience such a consistent manifestation of abject distress. It gives light to many failures of government policy. That those children who require admission are transferred to Edinburgh Sick Kids, not just impacts on their lives, but also the capacity of that hospital as well. It's, it's depressing. And it's depressing also that once again, the challenges facing this ward um, are brought before this chamber for debate by opposition members' debates rather than government scrutiny or government time. And once again, I'd ask the uh, Cabinet Secretary to reflect on that and bring this kind of debate before Parliament in the future. It is a can that has been kicked down the road for six years. My friend and colleague and predecessor as a Lib Dem MSP in this place, Alison McInnes, said in 2012 that parents deserve to have faith that St John's is operating at world-class levels and not surviving from day to day. Well, Deputy Presiding Officer, six years on, this ward is still surviving from day to day. Closures and partial service reductions happened in 2012. They happened again in 2015 and more extensively, as we now know, in 2017 and 2018. In many ways, the, the situation at the Children's Ward at St John's represents a microcosm of problems throughout the NHS in terms of upward pressure exerted on every department, and every kind of hospital and primary care setting. It's, it simulates unmet demand, patient inconvenience and discomfort and inadequate workforce planning. And the record of this government on both world workforce planning and child health in general isn't great. When we have two year waits for first line treatment in child and adolescent mental health uh, circumstances. And in the closure of children's wards in other parts of the country, and Anasawa rightly referenced the Royal Alexandria, and indeed in the part-time provision that we are debating today at St. John's, it is the treatment of our children should be the first priority, not just for the Cabinet Secretary for Health, but for the First Minister and this government in its entirety. It should be the alpha and the omega of every consideration around healthcare spending and healthcare priorities. We're talking about the lives and the welfare of some of the most vulnerable children in our society, some who are critically unwell, many on uncertain journeys. And it is at times like this that you need certainty in the care that we can offer them. And we still hear, however, that 400 of them have been transferred from that certainty to an unknown destination, oftentimes at the Edinburgh Sick Kids. And we know demand is here. We, we, we've heard a lot about that in this debate. And the Royal College of Paediatricians and Child Health rightly suggests that the population that the currently served by St John's is adequate enough to sustain a 24-7 service provision. In fact, it's required. 3,000 children a year use that facility, with 1,000 or more requiring overnight care as a result. This isn't a rural area. It's not an island community. It's just a short drive from this chamber. Yet over the past six years, this government has been found wanting in provision in terms of the staffing crisis that this chamber has known, been known about all that time. We have been lurching from crisis to crisis. So I am proud to stand today alongside Neil Finlay, other opposition members in this parliament, and indeed the campaigners in this chamber, in the gallery and outside, who want to see action and not words. Enough is enough. Thank you. The last of the open debate speakers is Gordon Lindhurst. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And let me also thank Neil Finlay for bringing this important debate to the Chamber today. I have previously been updated in person together with him and other local politicians on this issue, but the matter has now dragged on beyond comprehension. When we sat together in early summer last year at the Civic Centre in Livingston, 
to be updated on the third prolonged period of closure in six years. One dared to hope that a solution might be in sight. Some progress uh, seems to have been made. Last month we learned that a sixth and possibly seventh new consultant was to join the team, but still not enough to provide a safe and stable working rota. And safety must, of course, be paramount. My understanding is that the, the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health has said that inpatient services should remain suspended until such time as an eighth consultant has been employed. But these appointments that I've just spoken about came one month after the ward was shut down entirely for two days in December. Progress was supposed to indicate moving towards option one rather than away from it by closing the ward altogether. The review of pediatric, pediatric inpatient services in Lothian conducted in 2016 rightly concluded that inpatient children's services should be retained at St. John's for the long term. And that makes sense if we consider the local need which Miles Briggs, my colleague, and others have already touched on. Uh, those that know Lothian region and this part of it in particular know it is a, a growing area popular with young families. And the population is expected to grow by well over 10,000 over the next two decades. So there's an increasing need rather than a decreasing one. When the review was undertaken, the review team were told that the children's ward can often come very close to capacity. The second review into pediatric services, however, concluded that there is no quick fix. But to have ended up in such a dire set of circumstances in the first place is surely unacceptable. The Health and Sport Committee inquiry in December 2016 diplomatically perhaps stated that since previous concerns were raised years ago, uh, quotes, planning does not seem to have become more successful. Well, the reality appears to be that it has actually been getting worse. If indeed there is no quick fix, then surely the pragmatic approach advanced by opposition parties today should be fully considered by the Scottish Government. And to add in the flexibility of giving teaching accreditation mentioned by uh, Miles Briggs for paediatrics to St. John's could not only replenish staff levels in the here and now, but also raise the profile of the ward to ensure future staffing sustainability. And embedding some stability in staff levels could be brought about in that way by turning St. John's into a paediatric teaching hospital. So in conclusion, that could provide a service so desperately needed by the people of West Lothian and ensure its continuance. And I look forward to hearing what the Cabinet Secretary has to say to that specific proposal. I call Shona Robson to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. I welcome the opportunity to respond on this important uh, topic and thank Neil Finlay for bringing this debate to Parliament. Let me begin by reminding members the reasons why an interim model of service for the inpatient paediatric ward at St John's Hospital has been implemented. Last July, the Scottish Government was advised by NHS Lothian that staffing levels for the ward were fragile and at risk, such, a, such that there would be no backup uh, available if a member of staff was absent at short notice, for example, if they had fallen ill. And this could have caused confusion and anxiety for parents and staff and possible delays to emergency care. Therefore, the board chief executive, supported by the medical director, took the difficult decision to implement an interim model in the best interests and safety of children and their uh, families. Presiding officer, it is important to stress that the decision taken by the board to implement a, an interim model has resulted in the majority of children's services still being maintained at St John's so that the children's ward is open from eight till eight, five days a week, providing a short stay paediatric assessment service. Although the original plan was for children to be redirected to the sick, kid, sick kids at weekends, the board has been able to maintain a daytime weekend rota on all but three occasions since July uh, 2017. And the paediatric ward has remained open for day surgery activities as well as planned day case procedures and programmed investigations. Paediatric outpatient services, neonatal services and community child health services have all been unaffected and of course the A&E service uh, at St John's 
and continues. So, a wide range of children's services continue to be available in West Lothian, and the vast majority of children requiring services have continued to receive them locally at St John's. For those children who have had to travel, it is important that support is provided. Uh, and so, in response to Alison Johnson's question, I can confirm that that is the case, and the board should be making parents uh, aware uh, of that. I want to um, also, at this point, just respond to Miles Briggs's uh, comments about the position of St John's as a, a training facility. Firstly, uh, it's important to be clear that any decision about training status rests with the Dean of the Postgraduate Medicine at uh, National Education Scotland in accordance with standards set out by the General Medical Council. Members should also note that St John's is already a recognised training facility. There are currently six trainees in the paediatric unit at St John's and these doctors are at a relatively junior level who need to acquire their skills and experience in paediatrics. I am advised that NHS Lothian has recently met with the training programme directors to explore the placement of ST3 trainees for daytime experience within the unit. And further details of, of, that, of the experience that might be delivered to these trainees have recently been provided by the unit and are actively being considered by the training committee. If ST3 uh, trainees are placed within St John's Hospital on a daytime basis, I'm advised that they, they won't be able to participate in the out-of-hours service because patient throughput doesn't provide the educational opportunities that such trainees need and therefore wouldn't meet GMC standards. However, I, I'm happy to ensure that members are kept informed on the progress of these discussions because I think that would be an important step forward. I want to now come on to the re consultant recruitment at St John's. Uh, NHS Lothian has taken a number of steps to improve consultant recruitment in line with the college's recommendations. I understand that following extensive recruitment campaigns, six new consultants are now in post and interviews in January this year has resulted in an offer being made to another candidate. The board is now as required in the process of completing the necessary pre-employment checks and are hopeful of a successful outcome. I think this is heartening and demonstrates the board's determination to put in place a safe and sustainable rota to allow the return of a 24-7 service. The board remains committed to recruiting an eighth consultant to fully meet the recommendations of the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health Report of 2016. I'm also aware of the board's commitment to strengthening its advanced nurse practitioner workforce. Two internal members of staff are currently being trained in this role within the children's ward. On top of this, NHS Lothian intends to rerun an advertising campaign for qualified practitioners while also running an internal campaign offering nurses the opportunity to train in this role following consideration by the boards in April. Uh, as I said, NHS Lothian remains committed to reinstating the 24-7 service and I believe that these recruitment efforts to date demonstrate this and I don't think they're the actions of a, a board uh, shrugging its shoulders. And it is important, uh, given the fragility of the service, which Neil Finlay uh, mentioned in his speech, that we, to avoid those, that fragility in the future, that we have to make sure that Royal, the Royal College's recommendations are delivered. It seems to me that the recruitment efforts and success so far uh, have got the, the board um, uh, quite far down the line uh, towards those recommendations. And I think that should give us confidence that they'll complete that journey. The Royal College recognised in 2017 that there was no quick fix and the development uh, of uh, the, um, the development uh, is a, a needing a long-term solution. Um, depending upon the successful recruitment of consultants and advanced nurse practitioners. Uh, as I've outlined, the, the board has been absolutely focused on that. The key recommendations were that the board should develop a three-year strategy and action plan towards full em implementation of the College's report of 2016, increase the number of advanced nurse practitioners, uh, and maintain this and strengthen the short-stay paediatric assessment unit all of which is in hand. I'll take your intervention. Neil Finlay. Minister, the issue is that the Royal College report was 2016. This is six years this has been going on. When you say there's no quick fix, surely, surely people can expect, after such a lengthy time, progress to ensure that the, the service is back up to full speed. 
Shona Robson. It's taken quite some time to outline the progress that has been made. So the college said that eight consultants were required to get back to a 24-7 position. They're just in the process of appointing the seventh consultant. I don't think that says to any reasonable person that no progress has been made. Um, the seven out of eight consultants, I think, is progress being made. Yes, they have to recruit the eighth consultant, and yes, they have to make sure that the advanced nursing staff are there. However, I think to say no progress has been made is not uh, a reasonable assessment of the situation. The, pediat no, thank you. the Paediatric Programme Board was set up to implement the recommendations of the College's report of 2016, and I've been working hard to do that. They've been formulating a strategic plan and vision for services at St John's, which again is important. If we're going to recruit people who could go anywhere in the world to St John's, there has to be a good vision for the service, and we have to promote the hospital in a positive light. Uh, I think that is why the board have had some success, because many of the posts have been uh, recruited on a network basis. I think that has made those posts more attractive. Uh, but that vision for the hospital is important. Just a second. Options developed by the programme board through the wider involvement from clinical stakeholders are going to be finalised at a workshop in early March, and these options will be presented at the NHS Lothian board meeting in April. So again, there is a sense of momentum there, and the board are looking at what else can be done. Yes. Uh, the minister, uh, sorry, the cabinet secretary was just closing, All but right, if the cabinet secretary is willing, yes, Miles Briggs. Presiding officer, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for taking this intervention. I think, as you've heard today, there's a lot of frustration from members of, from all parties at the lack of progress, not only that, but the lack of information being provided. So would you commit to update Parliament on this issue so that we actually can take this forward and that you actually take this to NHS Lothian? Because in my time as MS, MSP, the information which hasn't been forthcoming from NHS Lothian on this issue has been pretty shocking, and we've been kept in the dark, I think, for too long on this. Can I remind members they should always speak through the chair rather than have direct conversations? Uh, Cabinet Secretary. I mean, we would, first of all, make uh, NHS Lothian aware of the issues raised during this debate, and of course I'm happy to do that. I am aware NHS Lothian provide regular briefings to MSPs, and that is an opportunity to hear some of the detail, but I can certainly feed that back and make sure they do, because communication, not just to MSPs, but to the public, is important in knowing that progress is being made in the recruitment efforts. Um, I want to just end by emphasising the government's ongoing commitment to a uh, sustainable, safe and high quality NHS, of which the workforce is a crucial element. I think that will be helped by the £400 million increase in the budget for 2018-19, which some of us have just voted for at decision time. Uh, I have asked NHS Lothian to keep me closely uh, appraised of the outcome of their re ongoing recruitment efforts and have been assured that this continues to be of the very highest priority. I thank everyone for their contributions to this debate and I'm very happy to make sure members are kept fully informed of the recruitment efforts in order to resist, um, return the, uh, St John's to a 24-7 service as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, can I first of all say that concludes the debate? Uh, point of order, Neil Finlay. I, I, I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary didn't, um, didn't mean to uh, mislead the Chamber, but um, it's just to put on the record that NHS Lothian used to have regular briefings for members. There has not been one, to my knowledge, for, I, I don't know, nine months, a year. Uh, there has been none. And I wonder if I have written to M uh, NHS Lothian twice about this, never had a response. Well, it wasn't actually a point of order, but I understand the Cabinet Secretary is quite happy to respond with her point of view on that. I'm certainly happy to uh, suggest to NHS Lothian that they want to, uh, may want to brief elected members on a regular basis, but I think there's also an onus on elected members to ask NHS Lothian to meet with them, to fully brief them. I would imagine that they would be quite happy to do that should the member request a meeting. Well, that concludes the debate having been concluded and then the point of order. <laughs> and I close this meeting.